Welcome to this demo for Cloud System Enterprise. In this demo, we're going to be showing you how to design services using the topology designer. So we're going to create uh, application infrastructure services design templates. Uh, we're going to create, manage and publish compute, network and storage services that cloud users can then go and deploy. So the first thing we'll do is log into our cloud service automation or CSA management console. And here we see the uh, main page and we can see we've got several tiles, the first being organizations. And when we hover over the tile, as you can see, it displays a brief description of what we are likely to find behind that tile. So just to, to recap, organizations, um, this deals with the management of tenant organizations in a multi-tenancy configuration. So an organization represents a department, a business unit, or even a customer. Providers deals with the management of resource providers that are used by CSA to provision application and infrastructure services that will then be published in the service catalog. Designs, that allows us to go in and create a service design templates, also known as blueprints. And then offerings, uh, this is where a service design template can be used to create one or more service offerings that can then be published into the service catalog for users to consume. And then catalogs is where we manage the global service catalog this is a catalog that's shared amongst all organizations. And also we can create uh, organization specific service catalogs as well. And then in operations, we've got the monitoring of live services, in, including service provisioning services. And then in the marketplace, uh, with, this is where we, uh, we can browse the service catalog and subscribe to a published service offering. And then cloud analytics, this allows us to access the HPE executive scorecard reports and dashboard for insight into how the service offerings are being consumed. And then orchestration, this gives us direct access to HP operations orchestration and uh, or OO um, that allows us to, um, this gives us direct access to HPE operations orchestration, also known as OO, and that's OO central for deployment and lifecycle management of infrastructure and application services submitted by cloud users. So we're going to click on the designs tile. We're going to use the topology designer and then designer. Now the plan here is for us to create a service template that provisions a complex infrastructure service that consists of one server with an attached volume, a network interface connected to a private network, um, the private network will be connected to a, a router and then that router will be connected to an external network. We're going to add a, a floating IP address to allow inbound access to the VM. We're also going to configure security group uh, firewall rules to control and limit the type of traffic can that can access the VM instance. So to create a, a new design template, I just click create. And I'm going to give it a name, test design, and uh, description. And now I'm going to leave the initial version to 1.00. If I wish, I can change the image from my design. I'm going to choose this uh, image there. And then click create. Okay, so it's created my test design. And now I go to the designer tab. And down the left hand side, I've got a palette of all of the objects, all of the resources that can be part of my design. So this area is what we call the topology editor. Let me just get it up to full screen. Now in the search box in the bottom left, I'm going to type in OpenStack. 
not like that. I'm going to type in, in the search box at the bottom left, I'm going to type in OpenStack, and that's going to filter the resources, and it will just show me the OpenStack components. I need to find the OpenStack server. So when I hover over these resources, it shows me what it is. This is an OpenStack server, and I'm going to drag it onto the canvas. So there I have my first server. I need an OpenStack volume. I need an OpenStack network interface. I also need an OpenStack private network and OpenStack router. I need an OpenStack external network. I also need an OpenStack floating IP. And finally, I need an OpenStack security group. Okay, so I've got all of the components that are going to comprise this service offering. Uh, but as we can see, we've got uh, warning triangles all over the place. We, there's some configuration we need to do. So what we uh, will do next is connect these resources together. The first thing I'll do is connect the volume. So if I hover over there, it turns into a little finger icon. And I'm going to connect the volume to the server. And we can see the volume is now attached to the server. I need to connect the server to the network interface. I need to connect the network interface to the private network. I need to connect the network interface to the security group. I need to connect the private network to the router. I need to connect the router to the external network. I need to connect the floating IP to the router. I need to connect the floating IP to the network interface. Okay, so as we can see, it's uh, getting a bit of a mess. I'm going to click the automatic layout button at the bottom, and it rearranges things in a slightly more easy to understand fashion. Let me just scroll out a little bit. Now I can drag these uh, items around manually if I wish, but I'll leave them where they are for now. So now we've got to specify some mandatory attributes for the components. So as we can see, we've got red triangles. Uh, in a moment, we're going to go in and to configure some of these parameters. So now we need to add the parameters. So I will click the red warning triangle on my OpenStack volume. And it's asking for a volume name prefix. I'm just going to do test dash and then click save. You see the warning triangle has gone away. Now, actually, let me just expand this out a little bit so it's a bit easier to see. On the OpenStack server, I need an image name. I will use my image. Keep our name. Key pair one.
server name prefix. Again, I'm going to use test. And that's all I need to add. So I'll click save. And as you can see, the warning triangle has gone away. Now onto the security group. It's asking me what security group name I want to use. So I will use sec group one, save that. And then on my router, the router name, I'm going to call it connecting. And then the external network is called external. And the private network is called internal. And the subnet name is called internal. We we'll save that. So now we can see that all of our warnings have gone away. So we've got a, a design that is valid. So now I'm going to go to the test tab and I'm going to do a test run. And yep, click finish. It's going to take a few moments to build this test design. So status deploy, that's a good sign. So I'll just pause the video and let the service finish its deploying and become active and then we'll return in a few moments. So after several minutes, so we can see that our test run is now online. Let's take a look at some events. And it's completed successfully. If I were to click on this deploy phase here, it would show me a process ID. Let me click on that. And that takes me directly into operations orchestration where I can see all of the steps in the run flow. So that's a good thing. The test has worked. Let me just now go into vCenter. And within vCenter, I can see that I've got two VMs have been created for me. Two volumes have been created for me. So let me now go into the Horizon portal and I can see these two VMs have been created for me. Uh, remember I put a, a string to precede the uh, VM name test hyphen. So those are the two VMs that have been created for me. They've both got private and floating IP addresses. And see we've got one volume that's been uh, created for each of those VMs as well. Okay, so I've just acted as a service designer, uh, testing my design before I publish it into the catalog. So I'm now going to cancel that test run to free up the resources. So again, that's going to take a few moments and uh, the just VM instances will be destroyed, the volumes will be destroyed, the networks will be released, etc., etc. Now what I plan to do is to add a scaling feature to this design. Uh, what we've done up to now is we've designed a template that allows a cloud user to provision a single server. Well, in fact, what you may have noticed is it actually provisioned two servers for me. That's an undocumented feature in this particular version of uh, CSA that we're running. Uh, it should have provisioned just one server and one volume for me. But there may be a solution, uh, there may be a situation where we need to provision more than one server for a given service. And we can use the scaling group feature of the topology designer to achieve this. Here we are in the topology designer. I'm going to click on manage groups. And I'm going to create a group by clicking plus. And the group is going to be called web tier. 
I'm going to change the image. I'm going to change the color of the group as well. Take my favorite color and done. So it's created my group. Now I'm going to add some components to this group. So I'm going to double click the OpenStack volume. And I'm going to select the group web tier and save. And you will see that the web tier a blue box encompasses the volume. So now I'm going to add the server. Now if I just single click and then click the edit button there, I can do that that way as well. So now the server is part of the group. We'll also need a network interface in the group. We need the security group in the group. And we need the floating IP in the group as well. Okay, so what this means is when we, or when a user scales this design up, they are going to add another server and that will be accompanied by another network interface, another security group and another floating IP and another volume. Now, when I click the name of the group web tier, it gives me some options. I can change the instance count if I wish. Uh, I'm going to leave it set to one for now. Now, the next stage is we need to uh, create what we call an options set for this design. Um, with an option property that is bound to the instance counts property of the group. So I'm going to click subscriber options and then add option set and I'm going to call it scale out options. Going to add a description. And I'm going to select the option modifiable during service modification and click save. Now, when I select the scalar option set, I'm going to add an option. I'm going to call it number of instances, give it a description, number of instances to deploy. Now I'm going to click add property. And the property is going to be an integer value. And the name is going to be num of instance. And the display name, number of instances to deploy. And I can use that as the description as well. I'm going to select editable. What this means is that the cloud user when they provision this service, they will be able to change the number of servers initially deployed when they subscribe to the service. And we're also going to check required. So it's going to be a required option to set this. We're going to specify value range of one to five. And the default value is going to be one. So what we're doing here is we're going to allow the cloud user to select between one and five instances and the default value will be one. Now I click done. Last thing we need to do is to bind the option property that we call number of instances to deploy to our web tier group. So when I click configure bindings, which is that little chain icon there, I select the web tier group and I click the plus icon to the right to add the binding to the selected binding columns as you can see down here and then we click done. What we need to do now is click save and the design is now complete. We're ready to publish the design into the catalog. 
But by publishing the design, this uh, design template becomes available to a cloud architect who will create one or more service offerings based on the work that we've just done. So I'll click the overview tab and click publish. Yes, I do want to publish. And it takes a few moments. And when the publish is finished up on the right hand corner here, we will see published. There we go, published. So now we want to publish a service offering that a user can deploy. So we're going to go back to the main menu and select offerings. And we're going to create an offering. We're going to base this offering on test design that we just created. I'm going to give it a display name of new store. And the version number is going to be 1.0.0. And the description is going to be new store with scaling option. And click create. Now I'm going to select the options tab. And we can see here our scale out options set um, that we created in the previous step. Now we click the publishing tab and click the publish button. We're going to select a category, web hosting services. And then we click publish. Okay, so it's successfully published into the catalog. Uh, in fact, we've used the global shared catalog for this. So what this means is our service design uh, that we just created has been published to a services catalog and cloud users will be able to come along to that catalog, select the service and uh, pur purchase it. So the next part of the demo is where we're going to go across to the marketplace portal and act as a cloud user, a consumer, and purchase this service that we've just created. So here we are at the CSA Marketplace portal. I will click login, and my name is Consumer. So we'll be taken directly to the dashboard where we can check our services, orders, requests, uh, etc. Uh, we can also click the main menu and select Browse Catalog. And here in the catalog, we see New Store that we published in the previous part of the demo. Now, notice that we have not set a price for this. Before we published this offering into the catalog, we could have set uh, an initial price and a recurring price. Uh, I didn't do that just to save some time. So I'm going to select this new store. I want one instance. And I will check out the name for my service is new web store. And I'm going to, I could, if I wish, attach some documents. I could set a subscription period. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to submit the request. And my request has been placed. I can go and view the request. And I've set it so that this request does not need any approval. So what we should find is that the service is being created for me. So it's going to take a while to do that. and. So back in the CSA portal, I'm going to select the operations tile, and we're going to go take a look and see what's happening in the background while my request is being processed. I'm going to select the name consumer, 
and we can see that my new web store is in deploying state at the moment. That's good news. So now we will go back to the main menu and click orchestration. This is going to take us into operations orchestration. And I click run management. And this will show me all of the running flows that are deploying my store. As we can see, we're running here. If I click one of these links, it gives me more information about exactly what's happening. I can even look into the step details, see exactly what's happening. Now, in the event that something goes wrong, this is a good place to start your troubleshooting. Now I'm going to go back to the Horizon portal and what I should find fairly soon is some resources will appear here. Uh, some, uh, there you go. Uh, that's again, there's a, an undocumented feature in this version of CSA. It actually creates two uh, instances for me when I only ask for one. Don't worry about that for now. So there are my two instances being created for me. And pretty soon it's going to create the volumes to go along with those instances. So now I'm going to pause the video and wait until the service has been completely uh, provisioned. And after a few moments, we can see that my new web store is active. So I'm now going to go into the marketplace portal. And in the menu, I'm clicking my services. So this is me as the cloud consumer, and I can see my service is online. So when I select the service, it gives me a whole lot of information about the service, its servers, its networks, its storage, its floating IPs, etc. And when I click the View Service Topology button, it allows me to visualize the topology that uh, is in this design. So we can also perform lifecycle actions on servers in this uh, provision service. So when we click go back to the My Service Details tab in the browser, uh, we can scroll down and find the server. And there is the server. Uh, we click the gear icon next to the server. And we can add security groups, we can associate floating IPs, we can perform other actions on that server, just like we would be able to if we were in the Horizon portal. Likewise, we scroll down and find the OpenStack volume. Uh, we can also do things like create and delete snapshots, just like we would be able to from the Horizon portal. So the final thing I'm going to do is to scale out a service based on uh, that scaling group that we defined earlier on. So I'm going to scroll to the top of the page and click Manage Subscription. And I'm going to modify the subscription. Yeah, I actually want 10 servers. Oh, I'm going to have a challenge with that because you remember we set the range from one to five. So let me just set to two and modify subscription and submit that subscription and view the request. Now what we see when we go back to operations orchestration in a moment, we will see that modification request come into OO and OO will run the flows to create those additional servers and volumes and floating IPs for us. And here we see the modify web store flows running. And we can go in and look at all the flows as they run. So this is actually doing the work of adding the new server volume, etc., to the service. So I'm just going to pause the video while that modification is completed come back shortly. Okay, so back over in the CSA portal, I can see that the modify is complete. So 
let me just take a look at my services and the services online and then when I go back to take a look at the detailed service topology what I see is that I started off with one server in my design I've now got two back over in the horizon portal I can see this is the server that's just been added to my design so the OO flows are all um, happy no errors there so that uh, concludes this final demo for cloud system enterprise so just to recap what we did in this demo is we created a service design we added some scaling options uh, we gave the consumer the opportunity to set the number of servers that uh, would be added to their service when they create the service and that brings us to the end of this Cloud System Enterprise demo.